basically all I do when I come to these sort of things is tell you guys or tell the audience what was actually happening to me that day. Um, I got up like anybody else gets up that morning, uh, got up, went downstairs, lit up a cigarette, had a cup of coffee, slice of toast, uh, went, then went up and got washed and shaved and all that lot. The wife had got up as well, she was going to work, the daughter and son was going to work. Um, called at the shop to get James's coffee and milk and tea and sugar. Bought another packet of fags because I'd had my last one at home. Uh, lit another one up. Started to drive uh, towards work down the motorway. As I get on the motorway, I start getting a bit of pain in my chest. Of course, working for the ambulance service, you think, oh, that's just indigestion. <laughs> and it'll die, I think, what was going to happen next? But anyway, it started to get worse. And I'm thinking, this isn't indigestion, this is something else. I've not cracked my ribs, the wife hadn't hit me in bed overnight and all that lot, so it's got to be something else. So anyway, I just carried on driving. I then starts getting pins and needles in not just one arm, but both my arms. And my hands then decided to go into spasms on the steering wheel. So my hands were like that on the steering wheel. And I'm driving 50, 60 mile an hour down the M621 towards Leeds City Centre. And I'm thinking, Jesus, what the hell is going on here? And then I start driving like this. And I'm thinking, I'm going to have to do something here. So I just carried on driving. <laughs> <laughs> so I then get to the junction I needed to turn off. And I see this stadium in the distance, well, at the junction, thinking, just because I'm a Man United fan, I don't need the Leeds United team to have a go at me, because it was Ellen Road I was passing. And I'm sure they were trying to get rid of me. But anyway, the pain was absolutely horrendous. I'm thinking, I'm going to have to really do something here. What can I do? I just carried on driving. I get onto the bypass, and by this time, the pins and needles was bad. <coughs> I then get pins and needles in my feet and my legs. So imagine, you're driving a car, I'm going to have to keep to the speed limits here, 40, 50 mile an hour, like this, pins and needles in your arms, pins and needles in your legs, thinking, I'm not going to make it here. And the pain was like, if I was to split you guys in half, that half over there, that half there, tug of war teams pulling me, and I'm just going like that. Chest is getting smaller and tighter, and it was just taking the air out of me. And the pain was horrendous. You know, I don't need the same, an elephant sat on your chest and all that lot. This is like having 10, 20 elephants sat on my chest. It was that bad. I'm thinking, I'm definitely going to have to stop. And I'm thinking, ah, I could do one of three things. Turn around and go home, but there was nobody at home. I probably wouldn't be here if I had done that. <coughs> go to the nearest ambulance station. Now, I don't know what it's like over here, but in our neck of the woods, if there's a crew on station, there's something wrong, they should be out roaming around. If there'd have been anybody on station, would they have been qualified paramedic, technician, or would it have been a cleaner? Would they have been able to use, do CPR? I don't know. Would I have been able to get into the station? I don't know. I might not be here. Or I could pull over and ring for an ambulance. So I thought, lay by coming up, flower lady. She's there every day of the week come rain or shine, I starts going down the hill, up the hill towards where she normally is, lay by, no white van. She wasn't there that morning, but I still pulled into the lay by. I tried to get my phone out of my pocket to ring 999, just wouldn't happen. By this time, I'm five minutes away from work. I'm thinking, Jesus, I'm going to have to carry on. So I managed to steer the car into the road, and I thought, right, if I'm going to go, I'm not taking anybody else with me, so I'm going to go the back road. So I went the back road to work. That's how considerate I was. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I just hope Pete's not on the gate, because if Pete's on the gate, he'll want to stop and talk to me. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was on the gate, but he didn't stop and talk to me because he could see I was in some sort of distress. I pulled into the car park, I fell out of the car, literally, dropped the keys on the floor, tried to pick them up with my hands to get the fob and get in, get
kicks in and I just shouted, James, leave. And the rest, the filming started then. I could see by the look on James's face that it wasn't, it was serious. And I said to him, I mean, he's not on there, but I said to him, is it what I think it is? And all he said was, we're going to get, well, you heard what he said, we're going to get you to LGI, blah, blah, blah. Um, the next thing I remember is landing on the helipad at LGI. I don't remember anything from me going down. Apparently I was down for, what, 15 minutes? They were working on me for 15 minutes. I know that doesn't sound a lot, but when you have six cracked ribs and a broken sternum, it's 15 minutes that I'm grateful to. Um, the guys did their job, not just the two paramedics, Lee and James, but as you see, there's Steve Cobb, the pilot, he did his bit. And the person that nobody realised or thinks about is the guy behind the camera, John. He actually did CPR on me because the guys were wanting to get some stuff. He put the camera on the floor and it was only about 30 seconds worth, but he just couldn't speak to me for about three, four weeks afterwards because it affected him that bad. The BBC had been with us for nearly four years by this time. So you can imagine what sort of unit we were. We were a closely knit family. So they're the four guys that I really, excuse me, <laughs> I really have to thank for saving my life. Yes, there's the consultants in the hospital for putting the stent in, and that was one hell of a weird thing. <laughs> when they opened up the stent and the bubble and the blood going through, it was, it was just, whoa, having a high. But that was, there was them guys to thank. The guys that you've not seen it on here, but the guys that were on the helipad, they literally ran nearly half a mile from Leeds Town Centre to get to the hospital to open the helipad so that I could be landed there. There was them guys to thank. Um, to get back to normality, my boss at the time had to ring my wife, who was in work, saying, Pam, I think you better get to the hospital. Why? What's wrong? Chris has been taken seriously ill. Oh, I'll go after I've done my medication round, because she was a nurse manager in a nurse home. No, Pam, I think you better go now. Oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll be about an hour or so, and then I'll go then. Pam, get to the hospital, it's serious. Oh, okay then. But she didn't, she rang the hospital up <laughs> and said, I believe you've got my husband there. Oh yes, he's just down in theatres having a procedure done. What? <laughs> so then she decided to come along. <laughs> uh, she didn't know that I'd, I mean, to be honest, I didn't realise that I'd had a VF arrest. Um, but she didn't realize, she, they didn't tell her because they didn't want her panicking. Um, so that was her part into it. Um, but all I can say is since then, I've been very lucky, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, to be invited to things like this, to tell my story. Um, I know there's one person here who's going to kill me, or I won't get a lift back to airport tomorrow. Um, I've been to America twice to uh, conferences called ECCU. I'm on the Survivor Network Committee for that. I'm hoping, touch wood, that I'm going to be in Las Vegas this year at ECCU. Uh, I've been to, this is my second time in this part of Ireland. Uh, like I say, some of you remember me from Port Leash. Uh, I've been to Belfast, I've been to Barcelona. I've done a lot in the UK working with, alongside Arrhythmia Alliance, SADG UK, and charities like that. Um, I, in fact, last weekend I flew back in from Dubai doing a conference out there from Zoll uh, Medical. Um, they invited me out there, so Dubai, and then I come to Dublin, well, flying to Dublin, then to come to Tullamore. So I'm doing that sort of thing. It's my way of giving back, because I used to be a community responder like you guys. But if you can imagine, you get that text message, you're going to a cardiac arrest, how am I going to feel? And it does affect me. Uh, so I don't do that anymore. I do this instead to pass on my story. Um, and this is my way of giving back. And I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for being here, 
grateful for them guys for saving me. Because even up there didn't want me, they wanted me to stay down here to do my bit. And we've had it, a few of the speakers already have mentioned it, early CPR, early defibrillation. Yeah, fair enough, I was in the right place at the right time. But I could have been somewhere else. Early, D, early CPR, early D will save lives. Um, so that's my story. Um, oh, there was one other thing. When the first time I went to America, uh, to San Diego, it was a special event. It was the 50th anniversary of the introduction of what we know as modern CPR. I've had the privilege and honor of meeting two of what I would class as the founding fathers of CPR, Dr. <coughs> Jude, and Dr, believe it or not, his name is Dr Knickerbocker. <laughs> and I met the grandson of the other doctor, Dr Cowerhove, and I met his grandson. I've not just met him once, I've met him both twice now. So there's them guys that I thanked as well. But that event was the 50th anniversary, so they wanted 50 survivors from around the world. So they got 50 of us, 49 from America and Canada, and me. <laughs> but I went with a little bit of advantage. I went with that, uh, and they use it out in America now as a training tool. The only downside to it is the academy still hasn't given me my Oscar yet, so... Um, and I believe that was on, uh, that's on tomorrow, so I might get a chance. But no, that's my story. It is true. I'm living proof, and there's proof as well. So thank you very much.